The Military and the Fourteenth Amendment. September 8, 2020 by Anna Von Reitz. Someone has suggested that President Trump may use provisions of the Fourteenth Amendment to strip electoral college votes from states engaged in insurrection and take other measures to clamp down on violent demonstrators and looters. Mr. Trump doesn't need the Fourteenth Amendment to take action. He has a mandate from the United States of America to protect the people and the property of this country. If he and his advisors are so clueless that they can't or won't act upon that, there is no higher authority. We are the civilian government, not the civil government, we are the government that the U.S. military is supposed to obey. Instead, they have been taking their orders from the civil government, that is, Municipal United States Congress, which is a reckless, unaccountable, foreign international city-state oligarchy, allowed to exist under the provisions of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. Note the discussion yesterday regarding, civilian, versus, civil, government. Civil, refers to the municipal government and the federal civil service. Civilian, refers to the states and people, which are now assembled and in session. If our president and our military are so stupid that they can't figure out that, one, our government is not always in session and that things change dramatically when it is, and two, that, civil, and, civilian, are not the same thing, then it is also a given that they won't recognize the lack of any authority vested in the so-called 14th Amendment, either. The Fourteenth Amendment was made to the corporate charter of the Scottish interloper running, the United States of America, incorporated, back in 1868. This is a different kind of constitution, entirely, and a very venal semantic deceit which was used as a means of fraud to gain access to our national credit. No, amendment, to this document from the Fourteenth onward was ever ratified by the states of the Union. It therefore has no importance to us and is merely an historical internal document of our subcontractors, who elected to incorporate their own operations under the Scottish Commonwealth Government back in 1868. They went bankrupt in 1906. That bankruptcy settled in 1953. Both the Scottish interloper and its constitution, are well and truly defunct, and cannot form any basis for or claim any authority whatsoever for anyone, even the employees of successor organizations which are now working without a contract. This entire situation is so completely, madhouse, that it's laughable, if you have an ironic sense of humor. We have a military that can't tell the difference between the civilian government which is now in session and the civil government occupying Washington, D.C. We have a president, apparently, relying on authority vested in amendments made over a hundred years ago to a defunct Scottish corporation charter, all without ratification by our states, and therefore invalid then and now, even if that corporation were still in business, which it is not. Oh, what a tangled web we weave, when first we practice to deceive. And the yahoos and yokels responsible for this, men like William Tecumseh Sherman, William Henry Seward, Woodrow Wilson, William F. Cody, Colonel Mandel House, Cornelius Vanderbilt and Nelson Rockefeller, thought they were so brilliant and we were all so stupid, that we would never figure it out, but we have awakened from our slumber and done exactly that. All of it. Down to the fine details. The U.S. military along with all the, presumed, to be, reserve personnel, who supposedly never returned to their birthright political status, either because they were, cashiered, as assets of the state trusts after the Civil War, or because they, neglected, to inform the heads of their branches of service of their return to their natural political status after their tour of military service, had better get their thinking caps on at this late date. There is no viable 14th Amendment, no 15th, no 16th, no 17th. There is no basis to claim that there is now or ever has been any such, amendment, applicable to the actual American federal constitution, and no agreed-upon alteration to any territorial constitution, either, finally, the vast majority of us are not and never have been employed by any such employer and owe no fealty based on any such condition of employment. So take it home and take it to the bank. The Scottish interloper doing business as the United States of America, incorporated, from 1868 to 1906 is dead and gone, and its bankruptcy has been settled since 1953. Anything associated with that entity had nothing to do with us and had no authority related to the states and people of this country, and any presumption otherwise is founded on pure British bunk. It was all nothing but self-interested fraud then, and it remains so now. 
the U.S. military needs to get its proverbial head out of its proverbial butt and needs a good swift kick from the people who have so loyally supported it with so little support in return. And Mr. Trump needs to realize what the real basis of his authority and power rests upon.